Hello everybody, this is Dr. Asha working as Associate Professor for the Department of Civil Engineering, SJBIT Mysore. In this video, I shall be covering up the concepts of water supply, need for protected water supply, types of water demands, etc. So first of all, let us understand the importance of a safe water supply system. So here, the prime concern is about the water as it is a basic need for every human being and most of the world population still does not have the centralized water supply with connections to individual households. And as per World Health Organization, roughly around 2.4 billion of the world's population does not have access to an improved sanitation facility yet. And about 1.1 billion people does not have access to safe drinking water. So like having access to safe drinking water is one of the important amenity to the human life. And so here we shall be understanding the requirement of having the safe drinking water. And we are very much aware about that water is a chemical compound with H2O while it is not only the H2O now with that we are receiving too many other contaminants right from the sky till it reaches to our tap. So now our prime concern is to see that every one of us get the safe drinking water in our taps but still we are becoming helpless as it is purely contaminated now. So, and it is very well known that no life can exist without water as it is an essential for life as air is. So, now we shall understand the necessary that the water required for their needs must be good and it sh should not contain the unwanted impurities or contaminants. Therefore, in order to ensure the availability of sufficient quantity of good quality water, it becomes imperative in the present day scenario to plan and build suitable water supply schemes which may provide portable water to the various sections of the community in accordance with their demands and requirements. So, ensuring that the water supplied is meeting the demands is very much important and this can be happen only if there is the proper provision of a water supply scheme which will ensure a constant and a reliable water supply to that section of the people for which the scheme is being designed and such a scheme shall not only help in supplying safe wholesome water to the people for domestic purposes that means for drinking cooking bathing washing vessels clothes etc but also to keep the diseases away and thereby promoting the better health but uh, it would be also helpful in uh, supplying water for the public reasons that is for fountains gardens etc and even helps in maintaining better sanitation of all the beautification of the surroundings which will in turn reduce the environmental pollution. And this even promotes overall hygiene and public health and it shall ensure the safety against fire by supplying sufficient quantity of water to extinguish it. So in this particular video we shall understand the importance of the water supply scheme. The water supply scheme involves collection, conveyance, treatment and distribution of water. So we shall understand this, how it goes in sequence. In early days, people lived in small isolated areas and their habits were such that they consumed water for drinking, bathing and cooking only and each family collected water for its own designated use. And this was necessary, that means the water was necessary for 
collecting from the proper surface source like river, lake and pond etc. But as the population increased, towns and cities developed and the habits of the people also improved. Trades and industries, that is the expansion of the city in terms of business was also established and as a result, the demand for water increased considerably. So like the original small water supplies that which we were relying on became insufficient and large water sources became inevitable. That means like those smaller sources then was now difficult to maintain, I mean to procure with the demand. A large water source may be far away from the township and the quality of water may not be safe for drinking. So the role of the water supply scheme that is the sequence of collection, conveyance, treatment and distribution of water comes in handy here. So for every town or a city, an statutory body that is an administrative body, either the municipality or corporation has been established to look after the public health and to supply portable water to consumers after proper treatment. So let us get to know what does it mean by portable water. Portable water is also known as drinking water coming from the surface and ground sources and is treated to levels that meet the state standards for consumption. So here the state means the state pollution control board. Water is required for the following purposes which includes drinking and cooking, bathing and washing of clothes and utensils, washing of vehicles, swimming pools, fountains, etc., firefighting and industries. At many places, water is lifted from deep tube wells by a turbine pump and is supplied directly to the consumers without any treatment. So, however, if this is the case, we cannot speak about the safety of the drinking water if supplied without any treatment. And in that case, the water supply scheme becomes necessary to create a proper network for distribution of safe drinking water. Salient features of a water supply the following are the salient features of a water supply scheme under which the prime is the population forecast because whatever the structure that we will be designing would be playing their vital role for the future course of water supply scheme. That means like every scheme should be such that it may run satisfactorily at least for three decades from the start of the design. I mean uh, the planning and execution. So the probable population of the town or a city should be ascertained for the future decades and it should be based on the design periods of individual structures. Next is the assessment of water demand. Depending upon the probable population, the total water requirement for the town or a city should be estimated considering the domestic demand, public demand, industrial demand, fire demand, etc. Next is the record of industry. The record of industry is like important for a city. That is because like the city would be more entertaining the industry. The nature and number of industries in a town or city should be recorded. That is because the industries require much more water for running, maintenance and operation and this record should also be updated from time to time that is uh, depending on the likely to expand uh, provision. The next one is the source of water selected that may be like the surface source or a groundwater source. The cost of the water supply scheme depends on the selection of the site for the source of water. So the source of water should be such that the cost of conveyance and the treatment should be reasonable. That means it should not be so that 
the cost of conveyance should be levied on the beneficiaries. So the next is the quality of water. The water should not be too turbid and there should not be any sort of contamination or very minimum contamination to avoid any excessive treatment. Over at reservoir, the water of this treatment, that is the complete sequence of treatment, is generally stored in over at reservoir from where it is to be supplied for the beneficiaries or the consumers. And the location of the reservoir should be such that the water can flow easily to the network of distribution system. Need to protect water supply. The water supply to the consumers should be protected for the following reasons. That is like the water available from the source, that is the surface sources such as rivers, lakes, reservoirs, etc. may be polluted by people residing near the sources. And the industrial waste may also pollute it. That is like the whatever uh, industries that are located near the selected source may also be the contributor for the pollution. Henceforth, the Reasoning for selection of the source in and around the industry also matters and it may because like it may carry suspended and dissolved impurities and bacteria which may cause waterborne diseases like typhoid, dysentery, cholera, etc. And the next thing is like the underground or the groundwater may be polluted by the percolating water which may carry harmful chemicals. And such pollution may be the cause of various diseases. The source of water may be polluted by radioactive substances which may affect the human organ seriously. And the discharge from nuclear power plant, nuclear research center is also a matter of concern. So these are the objectives of protected water supply system. That means like the water that is supplied should be wholesome water which means to tell that the water should be in need to the beneficiaries. That means to satisfy their domestic needs. So what does it mean by wholesome water? It is uh, the water should be fit to use for drinking, cooking, food preparation or washing without any potential danger to human health. So on the whole, we can understand that Wholesomeness means without danger for human consumption. The next is the supply of adequate quantity of water to meet minimum demands of individuals and make adequate provisions for emergencies like firefighting, festivals, etc. So the adequate quantity is an important criteria here because when we are designing any treatment unit or when we are designing any sequence, the quantity to be supplied is a matter of concern. The next one is provide adequate water for changes like increase in population. That is what that we have gone for the population forecasting. Improvement in standard of living. That is the quality of water also depends on the standard of living. Of course, the quantity is also a matter of concern here. Storage and conveyance. Here is a flowchart of a water supply scheme. So the first thing is the selection of the source of water. The source of water may be either surface source or subsurface source, under which the surface sources include rivers, lakes and reservoirs. Underground sources would be the springs, wells, infiltration galleries. Intake works are the first point of designing. That is like where is the collection starts with the collection of the water. From the intake works it goes to the treatment plant and we can just see here the sequence of treatment the water or the surface water will undergo. It includes plain sedimentation, sedimentation aided with coagulation, filtration, disinfection, miscellaneous treatment. And after the treatment, it is quite obvious that there should be a proper distribution system. 
so as to reach the beneficiaries and that distribution system could be either from gravity system by pumping system and the combination that is the dual system so the distribution is properly planned so as to reach the consumers and if it is in case the source is the subsurface or the ground source then the treatment is not that intensive and it requires the minimal treatment because the comparative pollution the intensity of pollution is lesser in comparison to the surface source henceforth the treatment is very minimal here and it is led to the distribution system and ultimately to the consumers the following are the duties of water work engineers that is the engineer should have perfect knowledge about planning design construction maintenance of the structures required for the water supply system and he or she should perform all the above works he or she should be able to detect the possible causes of contamination of water sources and should be able to know the methods that are to be adopted to control the causes of contamination so as to reduce the load on the treatment plant he or she should be knowing about the laboratory test to be conducted or it is required for the treatment works he or she should be knowing about the account details that is because huge amounts of money is required for planning designing and executing a water supply scheme and uh, in turn the running maintenance and operation is very much important in a developing country like india the problem of availability of funds for the first investment is very difficult to solve as money required for these finances are very huge and as a result of such huge investments india has been able to cover about 84% of its urban population which is about 30% of the total population of the country with safe drinking water supply although some of the supplies are quite limited that means to tell none of the metropolitan cities in india including delhi is being supplied water for continuous that is for 24 hours a day moreover the scene on the rural sector still remains a grim at many of our villages because like village folk are till today fetching and bringing water on their heads from distant places that is from either wells or ponds and there is no provision for testing or purifying these sources of water even in towns where municipal committees do exist there are no sufficient provisions even for testing and purifying the drinking water supplies except using the chlorination at certain places that means to tell chlorination would be an instantaneous treatment process till now